Cardano's Vazel hard fork finally has an official date. We're going to break down the details of what this hard fork is actually going to do to Cardano, how that might affect price, and what this actually means for Cardano holders. So let's get right into it. First of all, Charles and the team uh, did this fantastic uh, update. Um, they do this bi-weekly, and I, I would say this happened you know about a week ago a little under a week ago and they laid out the actual roadmap for when we should be expecting the vasil hard fork so it has a lot of details here details here uh, the main net is expected to or sorry the test net is supposed to come live at the end of this month early next month uh, so end of june end of may early june um, and we got the official main net launch date for the vasil hard fork of june 29th so that's the date that you guys need to be watching out for and we're get, gonna get into why that's going to be an important date and also what that actually means in terms of the changes made to cardano so the other thing that really came out of that meeting besides the official roadmap and the official date for the hard fork was a good update on the actual current projects building on ADA. If you're following Cardano, you're probably familiar with those ecosystem graphics that people post on Twitter, uh, but this gives you kind of the raw numbers. So this is uh, according to Cardano. So currently 937 projects are being built on Cardano up from 925 previously. And 84 projects have recently launched on Cardano. I'm assuming that this is uh, a two week time frame uh, since they do this twice a month. Um, so that's kind of the the timeline that I'm working with in my head here. But 84 projects have recently launched on Cardano while the number of NFT projects is up to almost 50 or more than 5,500. So pretty impressive growth there, um, you know, over the course of two weeks. And now the question kind of becomes, what is the Vasil hard fork? Uh, a lot of you guys have probably read about it. But what is it and what is it actually going to do and how is that going to affect holders and then in turn you know affect the price action so that's what we're going to get into right now so first of all what you need to know is that there are going to be four cips uh, that are put into the fork so it's reference inputs uh inline datums reference scripts and collateral output so these four now to put that into english what that actually is going to do for cardano it's going to target some main areas so uh first of all scaling improvements so including pipelining new plutus CP cips utxo onto storage and hydra uh, so scaling you know charles has always talked about how he's thinking years into the future even though cardano can handle a lot of, a lot of tps he wants to make sure that this is thinking way long term that they can scale up no matter what and so in combination with parameter adjustments these features will enhance cardano's throughput and optimize the system to accommodate an increasing range of DeFi apps smart contracts and dexes now this is kind of the anti cardano uh argument right is that there hasn't been this level of uh usage and and building that we've seen in ethereum you know you have uniswap you have uh, mexi you have a lot of these different exchanges um and a lot of these different dApps that are existent on Ethereum and that are highly used, whereas Cardano is still kind of getting there. There are users, but not quite like Ethereum. So he wants to expand that. In addition to these changes, they're actually looking at new products and features to provide to users. So like a dApp store where you go in easy add um, with a new lightweight wallet and bridges that allow moving assets from the main layer one to separate shot side chains. So they're going to have separate side chains that have different responsibilities and offer different dApps for potential users. So these side chains will enable the creation of decentralized exchanges where users can exchange their ADA from BTC and vice versa through incorruptible smart contracts, thus preventing the possibility of scams. And that's really, really big, right? Um, you know, when you're building a blockchain, it's really a trilemma between decentralization, uh, security, and speed and so he's trying to make it as close between those three as possible um so it's really interesting to see that you know ada seems to be picking up steam here in terms of uh you know the years that they've spent building it's starting to kind of come to fruition here which is cool to see and actually the first you know official lending and borrowing app uh is live on uh, ada it is on the test net as of now um but come june come june 29th this type of dap is going to be live uh per the vasil hard fork on cardano so really, really cool to see, you know, projects are already ready to go. It's really just, hey, when can Cardano support it? So this is Ada Finance. This, you know, seems to be one of the ones that has the most eyes on it right now. Um, it's going to be DeFi lending and borrowing live on the Cardano chain. This is kind of what it looks like right now. You know, you can kind of connect your wallet to the website and mint test tokens and kind of interact and see how it's going to be. Um, you know, they have a, a dashboard that'll show, you know, your loan collateral interest, all that kind of stuff. 
and then obviously they have a market as well to show you kind of what these loan offers look like um, and you know this allows you to interact with other people a lot easier within the Cardano ecosystem than what they currently have available so this gets me really excited it's interesting to see Cardano doing this for the users now and potential users and the last thing you know of course the the first question that you know comes to my mind particularly as an investor is okay what has this done to price so far and what can it do to price so as of right now uh when kind of this uh update was launched just to, or sorry when the official date of the update was announced uh just about a week ago um it didn't have a significant impact on price so uh we saw that it didn't really have an impact on transaction volume so the transaction volume was 1.19 billion on may 14th and it was a 38 percent decline from the day before so there wasn't necessarily an immediate impact and that's kind of what we'd expect right um i think we'd more expect the price action to come late june maybe into uh july and august right but there was a positive uh note here that came in on the 14th so the day after they announced this um we saw a uh growth in the amount of whales that were active so for transactions over 100k uh total 238 that was up three percent from a spike of 230 transactions on the day before and same thing for the transactions over a million uh, that's a total of 238 up from 232 the day before a two percent increase and you might be saying hey you know a two percent increase like th that's not you know anything really to be uh looking at but if we think about how many extra transactions you know that's um you know five to seven million dollars right here that we're talking about transacted uh up from the day before so in addition additional seven million dollars uh in whale transaction volume uh and whale buys that we were looking at right now so definitely something interesting to take there i think people who are for the long haul are probably eating up this dip uh, if you believe in cardano probably not a good time or not a bad time to scoop up a little definitely not financial advice uh, but we're going to round this out with some chart analysis and maybe a little bit of price analysis as well so let's go over to the chart uh, obviously if you've been following crypto recently it's been quite a <laughs> race to the bottom uh, you know we're down almost 90 percent from our all-time high of three dollars and ten cents but right now we actually established a pretty key support so if you look right here we previously had this kind of uh, resistance that flipped in a support right before this major run up back here and so we've actually flipped this previous resistance into support on this side of the chart um, that makes me confident for the ability to sustain that as support um, in terms of where we're going to be headed going forward you know if we dropped out there you know our next support is really not until <laughs> not until you know 20 cents ish down here right so it would have gotten kind of ugly if we lost this but luckily we kept that for now we'll kind of see where that goes um i will say i haven't seen uh cardano's uh, rsi this low in quite some time so if we pull up uh this rsi a little bit and kind of look in here you can see that we are looking relatively oversold right now um so you know oversold being uh 30 we're you know roughly around 36 37 uh, and if you look back uh at some of these times when we were sitting in this kind of pocket 36 37 a lot of the times we got you know some movement to the upside right so you know right here we're 36 37 right here we're 36 37 you know you see the uh rise right there and then here you see a little rise right here and now again right i mean it's it's a temporary temporary um lift to the upside before heading back down so i wouldn't say that this necessarily means that you know we're instantly shooting back up but i'd say after this bounce we're probably due for uh, a slight movement to the upside to kind of establish whether we're going to be sitting in this channel for longer or whether we can go past that now a lot of a lot of this hinges on obviously macro i don't think you know the fed will be uh you know stopping raising rates anytime soon and the next uh federal reserve meeting is actually june 14th so just about 15 days ish before the basil hard fork so that could have some serious depending on what they do that could have some serious negative or positive price action movement on cardano given this is a risk on asset like all of crypto um but I, I will say, given that we're holding that support, I, I'm confident in the short term. We'll see what happens in terms of the 
Fed uh, raising rates in June. And then obviously the Vasil hard fork could be a big catalyst for us. But if we're looking back to the upside, we really have to break $1. Uh, right now, that seems to be kind of the key level. You know, we swiped uh, below that uh, back in March, and then we came back above, kind of thought maybe we'd uh, see some more upside action there after we did that. Uh, but unfortunately, we came back below that. And this is a huge, huge psychological level, right? A lot of people are just kind of, you can see right right when we broke that $1 mark, a lot of people are just okay. You're kind of reluctantly selling, getting out, not really knowing what's going on here, huge red candles. Um, and now we need to get back up to that. So we need some confidence to be built in Cardano. Hopefully Basil Hard Fork is something that can do that. Um, but I would say in terms of our short term, we have to get back to a dollar. Uh, nothing really is going to happen, uh, you know, crazy pump wise for Cardano until we get back to a dollar. Um, you know, that really is the level to watch now. Um, so right here, you know, that would get us back above our 100 day. Uh, moving average, which we haven't been above since we last broke a dollar uh, back here, you know, last week of April, last week of March, early April. So the levels to watch right now are about a dollar and five cents. And then to the downside, we cannot lose 40 cents to 39 cents. If we do lose that, you're going to be looking at a movement down to, you know, 25, uh, 20 cents here. So definitely watch the 40 cent level. Uh, and then obviously long term, you know, I think where we're going to see uh some serious movement is if we get back above a dollar so those are kind of some of the key levels to watch and that is what i have for you guys today guys uh hopefully that was helpful let me know what other projects you want me to cover in the comments and we'll see you in the next one bye bye